familiar with this. I mean, it's no trig, at least in this one. So that should help us out a little bit. All right, so we've covered kind of the basis, guys. We know the derivative is going to be continuous. Um, and all values are in its domain. And we also kind of looked ahead as far as the first derivative and know that we're going to have um, one critical value at least at 0, right? Because that's going to create a vertical tangent. But let's go ahead and um, find the derivative. I can't actually remember what I this one did I do. You could either multiply that through, or you could obviously use the um, product rule. And just so I keep my notes the same, I want to see what exactly I did. And I did the product rule. OK. So if we're going to do the product rule, we can do f of x equals x to the 1 third times 2x minus 1. OK, so f prime of x is going to be 1 third times x to the negative 2 thirds times 2x minus 1 plus x to the 1 third times 2. Cool. Um, and then obviously I can rewrite these as common denominator, or rewrite these in uh, trigonometric functions. So I'd have 2x minus 1 over 3 times x to the 2 thirds plus 2 over x to the 1 third. Wait, why don't I get? It's not huh? It's not yeah, thank you. I was like, what the heck did I do? It's up there. It's in a numerator. But I want to go and get common denominators, right? So my common denominator is 3x to the 2, 3 um, x to the 2 thirds. So therefore, I'll multiply 3x to the 2 thirds And I obtain 2x minus 1 plus. So when I get this, I get 6. And then x to the 1 third times x to the 2 thirds is just going to be x to the 3 thirds. Right? You add the powers. x to the 3 thirds is just x all over our common denominator, x to the 2 thirds. And then I can obviously simplify this one more time and just say this is going to be 8x minus 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Now, if I want to set my derivative, I've got, to find the, I've got to find the critical values, right? So I'm going to set my derivative equal to 0. And when I go and do that, I get 8x minus 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Now, when we solve this, guys, when you have a rational function, does anybody remember what happens when you're solving a rational function? The simple way to really look at this? OK, well. We have x in the numerator and denominator, right? That's bad. We, don't want, we can't solve for x's in the denominator. So we multiply by the denominator on both sides. Well, what happens when we multiply the denominator on both sides? This divides out, and then this goes to 0. zero. So really, all you're doing is just solving the numerator. You're really just setting the numerator equal to 0. So we know our critical value here is x equals 1 8. But we go back to what Sydney said. And we said there's another critical value. It's not just where you solve. And this is the critical value that everybody forgets. Everybody gets the solving one. That one was easy, right? But where else is there a critical value? Huh? Zero. Why is there a critical value at zero? Because that's when the first derivative does not exist, right? You can't have zero in the denominator. So if you put zero in there, it's going to make zero in the denominator. Right? So you've got you to gotta make sure you guys are careful when you're taking that first derivative test, looking for when the derivative is equal to 0, which most students get. Everybody usually gets the 1 8th. The 0 is what people usually miss. So now, let's go ahead and do a nice little table. And we're going to have our intervals at 0 and at 1 8th. Since we don't have a closed interval here, we can really pick any number. That's less than 0. So let's pick negative 1. Between 0 and 1 8th, ugh, which number should I pick? Well, hmm. If I was going to do this problem, I would recommend picking a, I wouldn't pick 1 9th. I would pick a number that's going to be somewhat like work that works with 8. So I'd pick like 1 16th. 
maybe would be OK? Because I know whatever that value is, I'm going to multiply it by 8. So I want to pick a number that like, would work. Um, and then obviously, I'm going to have the, uh, um, and then after 1 8, I can just pick another number. Let's just pick something larger than 1 8. Let's just pick 1. Now, it is important for you guys to understand that 8x minus 1 is really the same over 3 cube root of x squared. Sometimes you might want to write, rewrite your rational function, rewrite the rational um, powers so it looks like this. Because that's important. Because if I know that this is squared, that means no matter what I have a positive or negative value, it's always going to be positive, right? So that's kind of important. It might not be apparent if you look at it as a rational um, fraction. But if you look at it as a root, that kind of makes sense. So we plug in negative 1. That turns to negative. Minus 1 is negative over a positive, right? Because this is always going to be positive. So you have a negative over a positive, which is negative. negative. Let's plug in 1 16th. 1 16th, 8 over 1 16th is 1 half. 1 half minus 1 is negative. negative. Dang it, two negatives in a row. Did we really do it correctly? Well, let's double check our math again, because we know we like those negative to positives, right? But is, is it OK to go negative to negative and positive to positive? Yes, it does happen, right? So just because that happens doesn't mean you did something wrong. It just means that we don't have an extrema there. Okay? Um, and then at 1 8th, uh, you plug in 1 8th, or not at 1 8th, you plug in 1, and we have a positive over a positive, which is positive. So now we're going from a negative to a positive. That means we're going to have a local min, and that's going to be our only local min. Now, I would say, guys, this doesn't, you know, I would just double check your work just to make sure that you're OK, make sure that this is negative, but indeed it is negative. There's nothing we did incorrectly. Um, so therefore, we could say you know, f has a local min at x equals 1 since f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals 1 8. Yeah, I wrote it right there. See, I'm, I'm the one that's not being careful, right? Yeah, so make sure you guys are talking about your critical values, not your test points. Um, and then also, we can talk about when the graph is increasing and decreasing. So again, remember, guys, there's no closed interval, right? So we could say f is decreasing. Well, if there's no closed interval, how far are we going to go over? How far do we go? Negative infinity. So we could say from negative infinity to when does it actually start increasing? At 1 8th. And f is increasing. on the interval 1 8th to infinity. Cool. You guys having fun yet? I thought you guys would like